Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and today I'm kicking off a new project the repair and modification of a dual rail Farnell power supply I uh, bought this power supply off of eBay not so long ago uh, advertised with a fault on channel 1 um, so the idea was at the time I was going to repair that and it was just going to become another power supply for the workshop it's an old design, it's got analog movements, it's got the basic controls on it, voltage adjust, current adjust, that sort of thing. 0 to 30 volts on each channel, uh, 2 amp uh, maximum. And I thought, well, I'll just repair it and get it on the bench uh, behind me. However, i kind of thought about it a little bit since then, and of course I'm going to repair it, but I'm also uh, going to replace the analog movements with a couple of digital LCDs. So back in the day when I used to work professionally in electronics, uh, I used to work in a workshop that had uh, quite a lot of these Farnell power supplies as you can see here. In this case, uh, the one I've got myself is a Topps 3D. I don't use it of course anymore, I've got some much better power supplies these days. However, I still have the old Topps 3D power supply and I'm going to keep it uh, for as long as I can. It's a great wee power supply that brings back a lot of memories. And so that's one thing that it sort of brought me to this Farnell power supply you see here that I found on eBay. It's an older version to the one I've got, hence it's got uh, the analog movements, the analog meters there instead of the digital readouts. The other thing that made me think about converting this from analog to digital is the relative ease it will be uh, mechanically to replace these analog movements with digital ones. What you're seeing here is not a bezel, this is the actual meter movements in themselves, the encapsulated movement. So it's just a case of basically removing them directly and I'll be left with a, a gaping hole there that I can uh, probably laser cut my own bezel that will fit in behind these aluminium strips here and it will fill the, the gaps rather nicely and depending on which LCD I choose I can obviously cut my own uh, cutout to, to suit the LCD however more about that later I think the first thing I need to do is get this thing powered up and have a look at the channel uh, one problem and see if we can fix that so I think the first thing I'll do is demonstrate the good working channel first so I'll just plug in the power supply and switch it on and channel 2 here, we've basically got the meter in volts mode as opposed to the amps current mode and the output's on, although that doesn't really matter so you can see that if I adjust the coarse pot here I'm getting more or less 30 volts all the way down to 0 volts and anything in between there, let me just set that to 1 volt it's, sorry, 10 volts So. Yep, appears to be working fine. But the important thing is in this channel here, I can basically dial it all the way down to zero volts more or less. Let's go over to channel one. And I'll dial up 20 volts. Yes, more or less 20 volts there. All the way up to 30 volts. All the way down to zero volts. And this is where the problem is. It won't go below approximately 13 volts no matter what I do with the controls there so the meter is actually reflecting the output so there's no problem with the meter and I you know one problem that could have been is a sticking needle however when I go to current mode there it does actually drop all the way down so and it's nicely zeroed there so there's no problem there so there's a problem with the electronics on the channel one so let's take a look inside and see what we can find Okay, so I've already removed, there's two screws at this side here and another two at the other side. The only thing remaining to do is take off the screws on the top, which also hold down the carrying handle. It's exactly the same method of uh, removing the cover from my own TOPS 3D that I've got on the shelf behind me. So it should be easy enough. Okay, so here we are inside the unit. Covers off, there's a little earth connection up onto the cover, so I've removed that and I've insulated that just to save it shorting out with anything. So as you can see, looking inside the power supply, we've got two main transformers down the bottom there, uh, two bulk capacitors there, and two control boards on the front 
they are mounted on the back of the actual meter movements. This is the actual control electronics here. Now this is a dual rail power supply, so this is what I'd expect to see, but more importantly it's a dual rail isolated power supply, hence the two transformers, the, to the two channels will be completely independent because you can actually parallel up or series up the outputs of the power supplies and of course you could only do that if it was isolated outputs as we've got here. So the two control boards there, um, I'm expecting to see a problem uh, on this board here. Uh, more than likely, there is actually another PCB further down, if we just go and have a look there. Right in there on the back of the terminals, on the front of the unit, the banana sockets, there is actually a PCB down there. Uh, it's got a few resistors and capacitors, that sort of thing there. I don't think there's any semiconductors. It's just used as an interface, really, um, back up onto the main board there. So I'm not really expecting to see a problem down there. I think the problem's going to be on, uh, on these control boards up here. So let's do a bit of probing. So luckily I do actually have the schematic for the power supplies, they're free, freely available on the net. Um, there's a generic set of schematics which cover a few uh, power supplies in the LT30 series, the single uh, channel ones, the dual channel ones, um, the different meter arrangements on the front, that sort of thing there. So this is the closest I've got to the power supply that I've got here. Basically, you can see there's a dotted line around there. That's your actual control board. And external from that, of course, you've got the meter. Um, single channel showing, of course. You've got the single meter there. And you've got the, the transformer over at the left-hand side here. And you've got the output bananas at the right-hand side there. And the coarse and fine adjust pots. And the current set over the right-hand side here. So, taking a closer look... Over at the left hand side here you've got the mains transformer, there's two tappings effectively. You've got one tap which produces the unregulated um, V+, plus, which uh, basically uh, goes through your 2N3055 output transistors there to the main output there. And then you've got another tap in here with its own bridge rectifier which basically powers all the control electronics uh, etc. So the power supply is basically a good old classic design there, op amp driven. You've got a couple of op amps really. You've got uh, an op amp down here that's controlling the voltage set on the output and you've got another op amp here which is sensing the voltage across a uh, shunt resistor here which is for setting the current output there. And of course there's a couple of diodes there, classic design. Um, tying on the same point here which uh, will able to control the main output there. So with there being a problem on the voltage setting uh, side of things the first thing I'm going to do is look at the coarse and fine adjust, adjust pots up at the top here. Let's see we're getting the proper supply to the pots and we're getting a good signal back from the wiper outputs from the pot onto the control board and then we'll follow that down onto the op amp and we'll see what sort of uh, output we're getting here uh, for setting the control voltage. So looking at the back of the control board here we've got two uh, plug sockets down the bottom here and they're marked on the board they're 12 way each and this one's marked 1 to 12 I think you can see a number 12 down the side there and then this one here is Mark 24 at the other end here, so we can just assume from that we've got 1 to 24 across those pins there. Okay, the next thing to do is to look at the supply going to the coarse and fine adjust pots here and the signal coming back from the pot, uh, the pot onto the control board. So looking at the diagram here, pin 21 is supplying uh, a DC voltage up on uh, one end of both of the pots there and that's just coming from uh, a regulated supply on the board here you've got a transistor here and a zener here so there's going to be a constant voltage here it's through a pot on the board there and that's just for setting a, a maximum voltage uh, for the pot so we should be getting a nice regulated supply more or less up on pin 21 here. So let's take a look at that. 
So that's with the zero volts in place. I'm going to double check that. The first thing I do is check my supply rails to the circuit and the op amps etc. So I'm going to go across um, the op amp power here. Pin 7 of that op amp there. Plus 15 volts. And on the other side, pin 4, minus 5 volts. So that seems right. I've got my 5 volt zener there giving me that offset there. And looking at the schematic, I do should be getting 15 volts on the, the positive rail there. So supply voltages are okay. And let's take a look at the signals back from both the pots and see we're getting them going across the full range. Uh, like I said, the supply of the pots is 4.5 volts, so I should be getting that on the wiper uh, since the pot is directly across that supply there. So let's try pin 21 which is the course adjust pot here, so let's vary that right down 0 volts and all the way up to 4.5 volts and anything in between. So that course pot importantly is going down to 0 volts, so I'm getting 0 volts on the output there and the fine pot shouldn't really be touching that at all apart from some small amount there. And I go on to the wiper of the fine adjust and I should be getting 0 volts all the way up to the same 4.5 volts and the course adjust pot shouldn't really be varying that much at all. Okay, so with the supply voltages okay, with the potentiometers hooked up fine and delivering the correct control voltage to the control boards, the next thing to try is to swap over the control boards because that's easy to do. It's just a couple of connectors at the bottom and a couple of screws on the back of the meters there. So I've actually just gone ahead and just done that, swapped them over and the fault stayed on channel 1. So that means the fault is not with the control board itself. So the only other thing that is external to the control board is the, apart from the, the transformers and all the rest of it, is the actual uh, main transistors. They're mounted on the back here, if I can show you, on a heat sink on the back there. So I've just pulled off the, there's kind of like dual heat sinks here, so I've pulled back the uh, outside heat sink to reveal the uh, the terminations to the transistors and there is actually if I just move around there's a couple of transistors there that's on channel 1 and the other one over the other side is for channel 2 and that's the transistors that are driving the main transistors on the back of the unit so back onto the schematic again, you can see the outline here of the control board and then external to that you've got the, the transistors I was talking about. There's the 2N3055s, that's on the back of the unit and then you've got that driver transistor um, which is dri basically driving the 3055s mounted inside on that back plate there. Um, it only shows you two 2N3055s but like I said these schematics are kind of generic in this particular power supply there's four 2N3055s so the first thing I did was I did measure some voltages in and around the 2N5294 and that seemed okay um, a little bit upsetting because this, because this is a feedback loop, loop any part of the circuit that's not working properly will give erroneous voltages right round the loop so you're not going to target the exact fault straight away however uh, I then uh, thinking the 2N5294 was okay I then moved on to the 3055s and I'll show you what I've done there because the 2N3055s are effectively paralleled up with their own uh, series resistor on the emitter it was actually quite easy to disconnect the, the outside to and just unsolder the three wires going to that bank of transistors there and just leave these floating because effectively the two transistors here are still in circuit and still connected up so taking a chance I've powered up like this just to see what happens and lo and behold the meter and the power supply is now working great. I can screw the course adjustment right down and give zero volts. So I'll just demonstrate that now. So there we have channel one, it's fairly high up, so I'll just adjust the course down and look right down to zero volts effectively. And then back up again, all nice and smooth. Now I'm quite sure the output's going to reflect that. 
and I'm not even going to bother measuring it. So by disconnecting the two, two of the two N3055s, it's now working fine. So what was wrong? So what I think is happening is because there are four of these two N3055s effectively in parallel, I think one or more of them, i.e. I. maybe one or both of these two in the back here, are leaking. And it's leaking some current down through uh, the series resistor um, when it's not supposed to, and that's obviously generating a voltage on the output. Um, so I'll try replacing one of them at a time because I've got plenty of them in stock and I'll you know I'll see how we get on and if I, if I happen to catch the first one then that's great I can uh, leave it at that but I may end up replacing them both you know you never know when you'll need transistors that you've collected over the years so I've got a transistors TO3 uh, bin here so I've got plenty of uh, transistors in there and lo and behold I've, I've got plenty of brand new uh, 2N3055s there and I've also got plenty of them that I've robbed from uh, various equipment over the years. So I'm just going to find two brand new ones and I'll stick them in. Well, Murphy will get you every time. Of course, it was the second transistor that I replaced that uh, finally fixed the problem there. So that's two new ones fitted there. And it's all working okay. Uh, subject to testing under load and all the rest of it. So I'm going to wait to fit it all back together and that's the repair effectively done and I can move on to replacing the analog meters but that'll happen in another video I think uh, we'll just get this one done as a part one and we'll move on to part two next thanks for watching